What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the stream. Hope you're all doing well. Oh my goodness, it is finally time. After the universe conspiring against me for so long, finally, finally, we're going to play some Ratchet and Clank on the stream. Because Spyro is all done, did the original trilogy. It's time to move on to Ratchet and Clank, which actually bought that trilogy, which is a long story ahead of it there. But uh, yeah, so originally I had the PlayStation 2 copy I was borrowing from my friend Carmen, uh, who was playtested by Noodle, her son. Verified that everything worked perfectly fine. They're playing on a PlayStation 2, which is great. I have a PlayStation 3 that's backwards compatible. The last of the units that's backwards compatible. I got to out. Turn this down here. Quick game. I just had to jump in here so I could turn off the music. So I have a PlayStation 3 that's the last of the backwards compatible units, and it uses emulation, which means it's not an actual PlayStation 3. You know, it's, it's not an actual PlayStation 2 inside, not like the earlier units did. So, every single time I tried to play the game, it would crash. At first, like, the controllers wouldn't work at all. So I had to buy different controllers, try to get the pickup. Finally, it started working. Got a controller that worked. That was good. And then, it crashed. Like, every single time you touched a single button, the game would lock up my entire PlayStation 3. So then I looked up online what was going on, and it turns out the model that I have that uses software emulation instead of actual PlayStation 2 hardware inside the PlayStation 3 will crash every single time you try to play that game. So I had to go through and actually bought the game itself. Uh, I bought the updated versions off the PlayStation Network store. It was like 20, it was $15 for Ratchet and Clank just by itself. Or I could spend $20 and get three games, the, th the trilogy of the PlayStation 2 games on there. I'm like, well, duh, I'm going to buy the original. No, I actually bought all three. So we're going to go through and start with a new game. I've not seen this before. I've only gone through and skipped like all the cutscenes. I also originally tried to do this on emulation on my computer because you can actually play PlayStation 2 games on your PC. And this game runs anywhere between 80 to 100% and frame rates tied into gameplay. So it runs 60 frames per second. So if you have it slow down to 80%, you're running at 40 frames, the game starts running in slow motion. That was the problem. All right, so let's see what the story is here. Final step, attach robotic ignition system. Thank you for using help desk technology. I like that they actually kept it 4x3, the uh, cutscenes, that's cool. Sometimes they'll go back and change it like 16x9 by, by cropping it and just cutting off the top and bottom and zooming in. Fortunately, they did not do that. Now, I've played, I think, the third Ratchet & Clank game, but I've never played the first one. And I tried, I think it was the PSP one as well. <clears throat> Pardon me. Well, that was convenient. So not only have they updated the game to be widescreen, 16 by 9, which is nice, uh, they also updated all the graphics to at least 720p, although I think this is rendering out in 1080p. Uh, let me see, I think there's much for options. Subtitles on, please, thank you. Thank you. 
Welcome to the Gadgetron Help Desk. We are here to offer you advice during your interplanetary travels. The Help Desk is a free service provided by the Corporation. So that's first person camera mode. What exactly are my controls? Uh, let's see. And I have no idea. I can't check on that. Great. I uh, love when they do that. Perfect. Controls. Okay, some help, apparently. So it doesn't look like there's an auto, like a refocus camera, which is kind of a bummer. So I'm guessing all these like bolts and stuff are money. It's been a while since I've played this, so taking a wild assumption. Yeah, so it was a real bummer. It was like a huge fight to try to get this game to even work. Because no idea how to go all through all that stuff, the PlayStation 2 version, but. Then it was just like trying to get my PlayStation 3 to work because all of a sudden it stopped recognizing the Bluetooth signals on my from my controllers. The Wi-Fi stopped working. So I had to take over my PlayStation 3 like twice to do it, and the start the screws are starting to get stripped stripped on it. And it's like, oh man, so it was Yeah, you know, it was a major pain. It was just this like month-long odyssey of trying to get this game to work. Gadgetron's OmniRange 8000 includes a new Comet Strike feature. To activate it, use the R1 button to crouch, and then press the square button. Cool. So then after I got the PlayStation 3 working again, after taking apart two times and getting cut up severely and needing stitches on one of them. Uh, then, let's see what else happened after that. It was just like, it was just non-stop insanity. Just trouble after trouble after trouble. Hey, Nimix, what's up? That's nanotech. Whenever you sustain injury, let Gadgetron's patent your well, That's good. Relaxing is good. But can you really be relaxing when it's this close to game day two days out? You gotta be reviewing those plays and hammer it into the kid's head. See, so has the camera autofocus. Kind of, but it's very slow. It doesn't rotate too well. No problem. So I got the PlayStation 3 working, and then the next thing that happened went wrong was my HDMI splitter stopped working. It stopped stripping at the HDCP signals. So that views first person as crouching, okay. So what did it do instead of like, it would show video, like it was stripping out, like it was cleaning up the video signal, it was allowing that to go through. Because basically they didn't, like, Sony didn't want people copying Blu-rays and video games and stuff like that, like uh, video game recordings, which is crazy. So, 
they put in high definition copyright protection. So you have to get a special splitter to basically take that out so you can stream games like I'm doing right now. And it was removing the part that was blocking the video, but not the audio. So I had video signal, but no audio going from it. So it was like playing a silent video game. So that wasn't going to work. So I had to buy a brand new splitter. It was just non-stop havoc. Can I speed that up at all? This camera turn is super slow. Camera. Fast. That's better. It's like, I'm going to steal this. Interesting. Yay! You're quite handy with your wrench. You bet. I built that ship with it. Hmm. Currently, I'm in search of someone who could be of assistance in saving the solar system. Do you know where I might find that fellow? Well, he's on the radio every week. Other than that, no. Hey, what's with all this save the solar system stuff anyway? Hello, citizens of... My race, the Blog, have a small problem. Our planet has become so polluted, overpopulated, and poisonous that we are no longer able to dwell here. But I, Chairman Drek, have a solution. We are constructing a pristine new world using the choicest planetary components available. So, what does this mean to you, you might ask? Nothing good. It's highly sophisticated technology, which you couldn't possibly understand. We will be extracting a large portion of your planet and adding it to our new one. I like Unfortunately, that. Unfortunately, this change in mass will cause your planet to spin out of control and drift into the sun where it will explode into a flaming ball of gas. But, of course, sacrifices must be made. <laughs> Thank you for your cooperation. Cut. And if you don't like it, you can take your whiny, sniveling, snot-nosed populations, form a line behind me, and kiss my... We're still on? Look, turn it off, you idiot! <laughs> The people on the trustworthy hose. Well, good luck getting Captain Quark to help you. Actually, you could help me. If you could use your ship to take me to the coordinates contained in this info box, I might be able to gather further information there. Even if I wanted to, I can't. I'm missing a crucial component of the ship. The robotic ignition system. How did you know that? I, sir, happen to be equipped with the latest in robotic ignition systems. My programming allows me to start any ship I choose. So, I agree to take you to this wherever <laughs> it is. There's no, you now we're talking line. For me? That is what I'm proposing. Deal. This could be a problem. Take care of it. Whoa, this is great! So that's where I've been stuck this whole time. Please return your appendages to the steering mechanism, sir. Huh? Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, and by the way, you can stop calling me sir. The name's Ratchet. Pleased to make your acquaintance, sir. You got a name? My serial number is B54296. Oops. I'll just call you Clank for short. Hang on! So, you see, it would be most beneficial if your citizens were not in the city when my workers begin removing it. Preposterous! I will not stand for this! Unfortunately, you have no choice in the matter. Let's just see what Captain Quark has to say about that, my good man. <laughs> I don't see what's so funny. Captain Quark could dispatch you without even breaking a sweat, you, you puny. You have now officially worn out your welcome and my patience. 
This is your last chance. Stop this madness now! Okay, wait. You're right. I will withdraw my troops. Really? No! He's all yours, gentlemen. Try not to leave any marks. I think he may be evil. I'm not sure, though. It's a possibility. Sorry about that. Well, we're not leaving the way we came in. Perhaps we could procure a ship from one of the inhabitants. If there are any left. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah, so basically it's just been like a month-long fight to try to get this game to work. I had to finally buy it on the network. You can buy, all, you can buy this game, Ratchet & Clank, the PlayStation 2 upgrade, upgrade version, which I'm playing right now, for $15, or you can spend $20 and buy all three of the original PlayStation 2 games. I want to go back exploring out this way, so... Okay, glove bomb. I got some great bargains for you today. That's a real beauty. It's nice that hit them on the rebound too, that's nice. Hopefully get one. Because last I heard, they were still like, well, we're trying to get every uh, so people could get it. It's like, oh, okay. I know it's been out in Europe, because you can buy it online, like European stores have it. Like Alibaba is actually Asian, but they're selling the European version on there. Which is supposed to work. Also today I got an estimate for how much it costs to redo our kitchen. Because it needs to be done anyway. And we're like, why, you know, why not use mom's insurance money that's left over to get the kitchen done? So that's what we're doing, and it's going to cost $15,000. And they are so backlogged that they can't get to it until February. I mean, we're talking like taking down the ceiling, replacing the flooring, all brand new appliances, new cabinets, lighting, everything. Uh, so we're not sure if we're going to do quartz or granite yet for the countertops.
Ugh. That's where something that I would not do myself. If I had a home improvement show, it'd be called This Fat Check. So today on This Fat Check, I'm going to be writing a fat check to my contractor to do the work for me. Uh, make sure that uh, when you're writing that you have a firm process, you know, firm surface to write upon and use a nice ink pen. Eh. It's kind of better she doesn't because we're going to get white cabinets, which she didn't want to get. But it's like a very darkly lit cat like kitchen and like very little light comes into the room. So white's gonna help reflect and bounce around light better so you can see what's going on. So we're gonna get white cabinets that she would not have been happy about. Then I'll probably take the rest of the money and put it into like painting the house, which needs it, re-wallpapering re certain areas. Mercenaries, torturers, assassins. I, I, I'll tell you anything. Here, take my infobot. It's all I've got left. Sir, we're not assassins. Hold on. Let's see what <laughs> he's got. Hold on. We can, we can still kill him for money. Has this ever happened to you? Hi, I'm Captain Quark. And believe me, there's nothing worse than stirring down a Blargy and Snaggle Beast from the inside and knowing your equipment isn't functioning properly. That's why I come to Al's Robo Shack for all my electronic Does he not have a nose? Al has been the exclusive repair shop for my super electro gadgets. Do you like Krillin from Dragon Ball? Sand mouse. If Al can't fix it, it's not broke. Right, Al? Kind of. said it, pal. On those lines, but not quite. Or just fighting grime. <laughs> come to Al's Robo Shack in Metropolis for all your robotic repairs. Al's Robo Shack. It's Quarktastic. Do you know what this means? Yeah, Captain Quark is really sold out. No, it means Captain Quark is on Metropolis. We could tell him about this invasion. If we had a ship. <laughs> what? Uh, a, a ship? What? You're not going to torture me? Well, as planetary chairman, and I could arrange for you to borrow our courier ship. Cool. You can count on us, sir. Right. Thank you, your chairman shipliness. Gadgetron infobots give you coordinates for new planets. You should press the select button to bring up the map and go to your ship. It's marked with a star. Although Phil Harmon would have been cool to have done this voice, but I mean, he had been dead by that point. I think at least four years. This is a PlayStation 2 game. I think it came out like 2003, and Hartman, I think, it was killed around 98. Phil Hartman voiced Troy McClure, so when he was killed by his wife, uh, they just retired the character, and you never saw him again. Yeah, his wife was literally a drug addict and killed him in his sleep. Yep, that was that was Phil Hartman. Hello, citizens of. No. Okay. Kirwan. Okay. Yep, he also did the voice of Lionel Hutz, the crooked lawyer. That was also Phil Hartman. He was also the caveman lawyer, anal retentive chef, Frankenstein. He was a lots of characters. I mean, he was a good comedian.
Imagine if you had OCD, this game would be a total nightmare. Like, I have to collect every single bolt in the game. I got some great bargains for you today. Blaster. Why tip more or less at the bad guys? Good to tip. And mow them down. That's a real beauty. Here's some weapon. Really? Shines at close range. Great for taking out those pesky small enemies. Blaster. to the Captain Quark Fitness Course. If you're strong enough, fast enough, and clever enough to beat my fitness challenge, you will receive a reward from my head trainer. Simply make your way to the third island to complete the course. Good luck. Quark Enterprises is not responsible for sprains, broken bones, snapped tendons, bruised egos, or accidental death incurred while taking the challenge. Excuse me, Captain, but we have more pressing issues. We urgently need your assistance. Clank? Yes? Do you notice anything unusual about Captain Quark? Well, I find the fact that he has a spring where his leg should be to be quite puzzling. And why do you think that is? Possibly an injury incurred while battling evil? This isn't the real Captain Quark, you numbskull. It's a robot. Oh. You're so stupid. Wow, okay, that double jump in range is kind of short. I was hoping I could wall jump. I was like, well, let's just try it, see what it does. Well, good thing I moved fast. I was not expecting those to move out of the way. These moving walls also function as jump slots. Jump and jump again to kick off the walls in midair until you reach the top. Okay, can't do anything over there. What is the purpose of building something like this? Inquiring minds want to know. Perfect balance for that. Listen up, you lard balls. That was the most pathetic display I have ever seen on that obstacle course. What do you mean? We finished the circuit, ma'am. Oh, yeah, but it is weak. Weak, weak! When I was competing, I would devour courses like that for breakfast. <laughs> that, 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 How's the robot get fat? If it were up to me, you would drill, drill, drill for the rest of the day. But somehow you managed to impress that fool Captain Quark. Captain Quark knows about us? He certainly does. 
Und worst of all, he wants me to give you a prize for that ridiculous performance. Cool, what is it? I'm supposed to give you a swing shot, so you can sway to and fro like little insects. All right, let's see it. Not so fast. Today, the two of you disgraced my obstacle course, so I am going to make you pay. But that prize is ours from the captain. That's not fair. Too bad. Life's not fair. Thousand bolts, of course. I could just shoot it out of you. Oh, impervious to bullets. Boo. Looks like it's jumping me off it. I want to see if I can grab onto it. Nope. Keeps sucking me into the wall. I'm not trying to do that. Now the double jump doesn't do anything vertically. I remember there was a PlayStation 4 version of this game, but I don't know if it's an, a remake of this or if it's its own one because they did that whole naming convention that I really don't like where they just name a game in an established series like the first game. So it was called Ratchet and Clank. So they're proximity based, okay. That's good to know. To quickly center the camera, just tap the L1 button. Oh, it rapid fires, okay, that's good. Yeah, so if you tap L1 to recenter yourself, it instantly, like, it brings you to a full stop. Let's go back over here, pay for some bribe money. There's like that stupid bear in Spyro. Sweet. I bet Captain Quark uses stuff like this all the time. Ha! Real men can swing without silly toys like that. The two of you make me sick. Congratulations on your new Gadgetron Swing Shot. Use it on standard Versa targets like the ones nearby. If the target is out of view, use the L1.
Okay, so what's the range on this? Okay, so it's circle, I guess? Okay, but what can I latch on to? The game's not really telling me what to do. games do this to you like hey look you can do things how's it work we're not gonna tell you hey thanks for finally telling me There, okay, that's good to know. There's something there, like perspective wise. Okay. Yeah, it looked like it, like it was a protruding out shelf, but nope. My eyes are just terrible. Got it. save just to make sure like it's you know I'm, i don't know exactly how the saving me mechanism game works like if it's auto saves or what i'm like yeah before like i do something stupid run out of lives that i don't know that i have uh, let's go through and save the game manually that just seems like a smarter thing to do not that i'm so smart smrt off a water bottle it's got like condensation there we go so i've been doing keto which as i've joked before is like being vegan you just tell people you're doing it spontaneously they don't ask you're just like i'm i'm keto that's great would you uh this is a wendy sir so so far i've lost seven pounds on it in like four days. Okay, so the short range, that's good. Is this like animal abuse? Should Peter be involved? Are they upset?
Ratchet, that's the man we saw on the Infobot. Remember, he knows Captain Quark. Hey, you're that robot guy, right? No, actually, I build robots. I myself am not a robot guy, per se. <laughs> Nerd. I like him. So, now that we've cleared that up, what can I do for you? It's not a we nerd, he's a dweeb. You were with Captain Quark. We're trying to find Captain Quark. We thought you could help us. Your logic is commendable. However, I haven't seen Captain Quark since we shot that commercial. Say, do you run on standard XP-18 sister boards? Version 7.66. Back at ya. I may be able to help you out after all. How does a helipack upgrade sound? Upgrade? Natch. Since he's a 766, I could have the little guy up and flying in no time. Of course, uh, I'll just need my fee for service. Okay, this won't... Thank goodness I had enough. <laughs> Why was I programmed to feel pain? <laughs> yeah, you the man, Clank. You're welcome. By using the helipad's boost jump feature to climb these boxes. Press the R1 button to crouch, then jump. Ooh, dinner sounds good. Okay, so you do get a higher jump, that's nice. this gap. While you're running, crouch using the R1 button and then jump. Okay, so it's a long jump. Okay. Oh, good. Good idea. I like how it just went right off the edge. Hopefully she cooks something good. I mean, Thai basil pork and uh, kind of disappointed because it was like slider food, which is what we call in the weight loss community food that just kind of goes through you fast and doesn't really stay with you, so you're like, you're full. So I got hungry after like two hours, had to have a snack. Wide enough to do a long jump? No. Try using the glide feature of your new helipad. Jump, and then press and hold the X button in midair to glide. got some range at least that's good as long as it locks on looks locks on seems like it locks on pretty close upon initial contact then I guess it shifts automatically to the next person sit there and just farm bolts all day long. Probably could. So I saw Tenet the other day. As I mentioned, I really liked it. That was a pretty good movie. Sound mixing is pretty terrible. I mean, that, that's just atrocious. It needs to be fixed because there's points where, like, the music and sound effects are louder than people talking. But other than that, it was a pretty good movie. And I'm starting to see, like, people write reviews and stuff online. And it's the typical things of, like, where people didn't understand the Matrix. 
So I thought that that movie was too complex, or like, this movie is too hard to follow. I just like the action parts. I'm like, oh god, it's, it's all, it's like Conception all over again. I didn't understand it, but I thought the movie was cool. It's like, how can you be that dense? But then I'm starting to see, like, people trying to plot out the timeline because it involves time travel to a certain extent, not like you'd actually think of time travel. But then, like, people are like, here's the plot line, here's the uh, timeline for this character as they go back and forth through time, and it's like, that's not right. <laughs> it's like, you were, you didn't pay attention, you missed it. Yeah, so you can actually sit here and farm dogs all day long for small amounts of money. Not advisable. Well, you could do it as a get-rich-quick-slowly scheme, but I really would not advise that. dig the theremin music though. Oh, come on, let me up there. A little slippery. Yeah, yeah, that was the thing that I did. trying to do like a mini hop and hop back out the other side of that wall. It just doesn't quite do it. is momentum a factor it is so you need to be careful of which way the train is turning if you're trying to make a jump
Yeah, see, this game's not too bad. It's been a while since I've played a Ratchet and Clank game. I've never played the first game. I played, I think it was the third game. That was a long time ago. I remember thinking it was alright, and I think I tried the PlayStation Portable one, the PSP one. This is my first time playing the first game. Dispense with the pleasantries, Lieutenant. My sources tell me you're behind schedule. You must prepare this planet to be harvested for our new world. Yes, sir. As you can see, everything is moving along as planned. I'm counting on you, Lieutenant. And as your former commander can tell you, I don't take disappointments well. Yes, sir. I won't fail. Drek is destroying yet another planet. Yeah, but if that's the kind of help he's getting, I don't think we have anything to worry about. You should not underestimate Chairman Drek. He is quite dangerous. We must find Captain Quark. Look, that lieutenant doesn't seem so tough. Let's take him out ourselves. Perhaps we can persuade the lieutenant to tell us where Drek is. <laughs> now you're talking. Yeah, it was uh, Ratchet & Clank Size Matters. That was the PlayStation Portable one I played. Ow. Ah, oh, jeez. Yeah, so I got stung by a bee yesterday. Oh, that was fun. Not just a normal bee, a yellow jacket, which are, like, highly aggressive, a little bit more venomous. Because I've been stung by, like, pollen bees before, that's not an issue. It's like, ow, it's like a little pinch, and then it, like, kind of aches for about 10, 20 minutes, and then it's done with. Yellow jackets hurt for, like, three days. So where does this take me? Robot Shack, don't need to go there. So we have like a ground's nest of like yellow jackets outside in the front yard and we're gonna let them be because they still do some pollen work. It's like, okay, it's not a problem. And they started attacking my dad's dog. So I was like, okay, we gotta do something about it now. It's now a problem. So after Carmen left to go home, I got out the wasp and hornet and bee spray. Stood back about 10 feet from where the hive was because it's a ground hive. They're all streaming. It's like a constant stream, like back and forth. Like bees were entering and leaving at the same time. So I figured I was probably going to be stung two or three times. And I unloaded the entire can. Like at first it came out like liquid. So I just made sure to aim it down the hole. So it was kind of flooding it. And then like the foam came out finally. So I sprayed the entire can on top of there. Buried the entire nest in like six to eight inches of foam. I was like, okay, cool. And I was turning around, go back inside. I was like maybe three steps away from the nest when a yellow jacket went like right from my wrist, like hardcore, like kamikaze into it. it. Stung me like right on a vein, which is right on top of a nerve bundle. <laughs> so it was like instant pain through all my fingers. I was like, oh my God. And it's like, yeah, like, like normal like bee stings, like honeybees like that. You can just like brush them off gently and they go flying right off you. Yellow jackets grab on. They do not let go. So I had to like grab onto this thing, crush it, and then rip it out. And like while I'm like still like walking faster at that point, I was like almost running for the garage, which is like a couple steps away. I mean, I had the garage door open. I was ready to run inside if I needed to. But uh, yeah, it like swole, swole up pretty big, like half dollar size, a little bit bigger. Turned red, had to take some Benadryl. And it's just like unfortunate. It's like right on. I mean, it drew blood too. Like it was bleeding. It was right on that vein. It was like just a lucky strike nice. that stupid yellow jacket got off. But I went back today and, and checked it out. Like the nest, it's completely dead. So don't have to worry about the bees uh, attacking my dad's dog anymore or possibly trying to go after my cat or delivery man or something like that. So it, was, it had to be done. Normally I'm like, let bees go because we have tomatoes in the backyard, which actually do flower before they start producing the actual tomatoes that you harvest. Uh, we have a we have plants all over the place, so bees are usually pretty good. But these were vicious and were attacking people. Commander, we are finished with this world. Commence towing our planet to its next destination. <laughs> Lieutenant, yes, sir. You have fulfilled your tree quota. Barely. We are ready to return to base. Not so fast, Lieutenant. 
Just because we don't need any more trees doesn't mean they should have them. Destroy everything. <gasps> He's evil. I knew it. I had, I had my thoughts. Neat loading screen. <clears throat> and there goes my Claritin, it's or Zyrtec, it's wearing off for the day, starting to get the sniffles. Sorry about that. Hi there, Fuzzball. Oh, that's a nice one. Glove of Doom. That sounds that's a that's just a great name already. Launch a horde of exploding buddies to chase down your foes. Ah. Grab a tissue. So you gonna buy something or what? I see the PlayStation 3 is sounding kind of loud. I still have the top off it, actually. Power supply units are getting pretty hot. Yeah, that's probably something that they replace, too. We'll see if the PlayStation overheats. It shouldn't overheat. I mean, I, I replaced, like, not so chip-wise. But I was reading about different things can happen with your PlayStation 3 units. And one of the problems that can happen is the power supply unit, which is actually what I'm feeling right now. It's like it's physically like burning hot. You get like a temperature probe and see how hot it's actually physically getting. They said like, well, if like when those start to like burn out, like short out, which can happen, they start getting like really hot physically. It's so like, hmm. So I gotta see exactly how hot it is getting. Okay, so you can only move it one way. No, oh, like, oh, you fool. <laughs> I gotta say, though, it's, it's kind of fun to play a good old-fashioned platforming game. Just something you don't really find a whole lot these days. And I saw a video of the new Ratchet & Clank game coming out for the PlayStation 5 whenever that system decides to come out. Uh, which is really weird because we're supposedly about two months away from the PlayStation 5 coming out and we don't know a release date, we don't know how much it costs. 
And if you want a pre-order system, you have to enter in a lottery to be considered about it. And in order to be considered for it, just because even if you're picked doesn't mean you're going to get it, because you have to supply your PSN name and your Twitter handle, so that way they can see what you've been saying about Sony online. And if you're anti-Sony, if you're not really, you know, up to their specs with what they want for promotion, you're not going to get it. Which is pretty crappy. This generation, I am not looking forward to. On the other hand, NVIDIA's new cards came out the other day. They showed those off. Those look amazing. They're expensive as heck right now. They're going to be short order, of course, for a while. But, but yeah, I'm more interested in the NVIDIA cards than I am about PlayStation 5 and the new Xbox series. needs a lock-on is what it could have used but of course it's just like a street re straight remastered port so they didn't do any changes to graphics well they didn't change the graphics but not gameplay mechanics they didn't do any like, quality of life improvements This is a naughty wall jumping point. Nope. Thank you, Gravity Defying Money, for coming back to me. I appreciate it. I can definitely see that being used in a speed run. Just holding down crouch and jump constantly. I mean, you do move faster that way. Everything dies! So it seems like if I did like the ground attack, it seemed like it was giving me different colored bolts, like gold ones. Do those give you more money?
Glove of Doom ammo. Okay, if I get the Glove of Doom, it's good to know that I have some ammunition for it. This is the first time I've seen that ammo. I'm guessing it's probably a scarce gun to find ammo for. So I'm going to take a wild guess at. I'll definitely have to check out a speedrun of this and see how fast they can do it. Just out of pure curiosity. Well, good thing for the hover, because I kind of screwed up that jump. Where'd you guys come from? Oh no, it destroyed my health upgrade, that stinks. I was like, good, I can use, you know, you know give it to me, give it my life. Uh, nope, destroyed. Ooh, okay. Sweet! Gadgetron sucking can vacuum up multiple enemies, then fire them out as high caliber missiles. Ooh, this has trophy support too. Enemies must be small enough to fit inside the barrel. Hmm, okay. Oh, well, that's effective. Anywhere I didn't go.
Okay, nothing there. That's where I came from. The camera actually gets hung up on like physical objects, so that means the camera is a physical object. Try back here. No way to jump that up. Can't use as a wall jump, so I guess maybe I have to come back to the plant later. Cause I've gone in a full circle. some great bargains for you today. We'll need a Gadgetron trespasser to get past this security door. Unfortunately, our scans do not show a trespasser available on this planet. Ooh, okay, so I really can't get that guy right now. He's probably right behind that door. Nice. 
Let's head back here to see. Maybe there's something here I need to pick up, I don't know. I mean, first time playing it all, so I gotta figure this all out. It's amazing how loud space is. It's because there's no air to get in the way, so sound effects are louder. Thanks, game. It's like, we're not gonna jump, we're gonna not read your input to jump, but we're gonna read it as you did a deck, like, second jump. So you instantly hover instead. We hope that's okay. Four shots, good to know. Smashy, smashy. <laughs> look, plumber's crack. What did you just say? I said, look, the plumber's back. All right, wise <laughs> guy. Shouldn't you be on one of them escape transports? Escape transports? Newsflash, giant robots attacking. Not the robots. Escape transports are taking all the rich folks off this god darn planet. So why aren't you on one? Socioeconomic disparity. What? He hasn't got enough bolts. Working people have to wait for Captain Quark to save us. Well, got anything worth a lot of bolts? I got this thing. Shows two weirdos ditching their ship. It's got coordinates to a desert planet, too. An info bot. Ratchet, we could use that. For 500. Pretty cheap. Geronimo! Did he just slide down a sewer pipe? How's he know who Geronimo is? 
Mayday, Mayday! This is the solar ship Radical. We seem to be under attack from the planet's surface. Relax, kid. It looks like some sort of fireworks display. Probably in your honor. Oh, well, good. So what'd you have? Yeah, right down, I can't concentrate. Well, we've been hit! Detour. When we land, I'll see if I can scare up an exhibition for you. We're not gonna live that long. Well, as long as it wasn't Rachel Ray style, that's good. They ejected into space. I'm sure they did not survive. Does he know Captain Quark? I doubt it. He's a pro hoverboarder, always going off about how cool he is. Looks like he's in Hot dogs and big beans. I've never seen him look so freaked out. Especially if you go all out and you're making the baked beans yourself, like Boston baked beans. Oh, looks like dog food tastes delicious. No, seriously, if you've ever seen like Boston baked beans, it looks like dog food almost. But it's like it's cooked, it's like beans that's cooked in a crock slowly with like bacon or ham hock in there as well, and just absorbed all the fat and the flavors. It's got this like smoky flavor to it as well, and it turns out like brown from the, all the molasses, so it looks literally like dog food. But uh, it is delicious, it's great. These things just really screwed me up. So I have like a uh, ground bees on like my front porch, like uh, like on my like I have like my driveway. I got a little sidewalk going to the front door, and there's like some bushes there, and in between two large bushes there on the front walk, uh, some bees set up home in a ground nest. Now normally I'm like I let bees be, you know, it's not a problem. We have like flowers all over the place. They help pollinate things, no problem. Problem is, is that they're yellow jackets and they're aggressive and they started they attacked my dad's dog so i was like okay we, we got to go out there i will take care of them i'm gonna put these things down so carmen leaves last night uh she came over for a little bit talked over some stuff um so she left and it's like it's beginning to be nighttime so it's the best time to do it all the bees are returning back to the hive and it's like the constant stream of like bees leaving and like coming and going non-stop so it's like, okay, I'm, just, I'm not going to get them all, but I'm going to get a lot of them. So I, just, I get a can of bee spray, yellow jacket spray. It says, stand 20 feet away. That's a lie. This thing only sprays like seven feet if you're lucky. So I start shaking up, spray the can. It only liquid comes out at first. So I start just shooting it straight down the hole. You know, I'm not standing over it, but I'm like still seven feet away, arcing it. So it's going right into the hole. And then finally the foam starts coming out. So I just emptied the entire can on this hive because there's like lots of like bees starting to come out and they're, they're getting into it and they're flying back and landing on it too when they're getting killed. So I'm like, okay, so I'm just hosing this thing down, uh, get down with the can and there's probably about seven or eight inches of foam on top of the hive, you know, the, the exit where they're flying out of. I was expecting to get stung like two or three times maybe, but because uh, I've been stung before by... Uh, honeybees and that's not a thing that's that's it's very minor it's like it, it stings like you feel like the sting and it's like ow it's like a little prick and then it aches for about 10 to 15 20 minutes maybe and then it goes away yellow jackets are like wasps they are jerks they are highly highly aggressive so i take two i'm about three steps away from the hive you know because the can's empty it's all covered more bees are coming back and I'm like halfway between the hive and my open garage door to go inside. And a yellow jacket just like bullseyes my wrist. I mean, it went on there and like it just stung right on the vein. And which is right on top of the nerve bundle. So it was like a double whammy. It just hit the it, it bullseyed like the perfect thing to hit to cause maximum pain. And the things were like 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 honeybees and pollen bees. 
If they sting you, you just brush them off and they go flying right off and usually knock off the stinger too. Yellow jackets are aggressive. These things clamp down and bite on top of you. So it's like they, so it was like, it was stuck on there. So I actually had to like grab it and crush it with my fingers and then rip it off my wrist. Cause it was just like clamped on. It was not getting, cause he tried to brush it. It just like, it just bumps on there. So I was like, holy crap. So I had to crush this thing, rip it out of my wrist. While well, I'm still making a beeline, ha ha, unintentional pun for the door. And because it hit that vein, it was like drawing blood. It was like blood was coming out. So I was like, wow, this is amazing. It's just, you know, it hurt like hell because I could feel like pulse through all my fingers. Uh, so it's got to be a lucky strike and it just swelled up and like half dollar size, maybe big red welt and rash. So I'd take two Benadryl. I'm not allergic to bee stings normally, but I was like, okay, this is an unusual reaction to this because it hit right on the bad spot. But I went out today and checked it out, and it seems like they're all dead. I didn't see any bees flying around at the front. Uh, we had the, we have like honey bees and pollen bees in the backyard uh, that'll come for the different flowers we have there. So that's normal to see a couple flying around. Also the tomatoes we have, but they're not aggressive. I mean, you can be right next to them, and they've landed on you, and they'll just crawl around and fly off. They don't care. But the front was like yellow jackets, which are aggressive. But those things were all seem to be dead. Right. So not to worry about, about attacking the dog anymore or like an unfortunate delivery man. Let's see, skid McMarks. Ha ha, I get it, skid marks. Poop joke. So that was my evening last night. That was fun. And my wrist still hurts today, so I'm like, what in the world? So if you like touch it, it still it still feels like it just got stung. And I was looking up online like uh, honey uh, yellow jacket venom. This is very close to wasp venom, so it can hurt for like three days. I'm like, okay, sounds like fun. So I'm on day one, 24 hours. Hi there, fuzzball. Okay, so you really can't try to hop across that. So like, maybe I can like skip across it. I destroy you? No, even though you're stealing this planet's quick stand, which apparently is a valuable resource.
Yes, all the money, please. Thank you. That's what that is, okay. Money dump. all ammo I have. Yep, that was kind of a waste. But I had to know. I had to know. Camera does not want to re-get on the right angle. Yeah, it's funny. The camera is actually a physical object in this game. A lot of times they don't have, like, collision detection for cameras in games. Apparently they did in this game. Because, like, you can get it stuck on different objects. You can get it stuck on like little poles and things like that and it won't keep turning. It'll stop. See if I can do it with this right here. Yeah, it kind of goes up and over it. Like right there, I got stuck on it and pushed it in. No signal whatsoever! This downtime is killing me! Do you need medical attention, sir? Don't be so literal, son. The problem is I'm stranded on this backwater planet and my star client is nowhere to be found. Hey, we saw you on that info bot. You're Skid's agent. Was Skid's agent. I haven't seen him since our ship crashed. And an agent without a client is like a flea without a dog. So Same you're saying you're a parasite. Ha <laughs> ha. If you can bring back the championship prize from the hoverboard races in Blackwater City, I'll make you my next star. We have no time for trivial matters, sir. Hmm. I could be the next Skid McMarks. Okay, so now we can buy that glove of I doom. Got some great bargains for you today. That's kind of cool. Okay.
Wrigler, okay. West side of the factory has slingshot targets everywhere. You need to slingshot years to explore. So let's go back and see if we can get over there. Shortcut. Let's see what we can find. Hey, Ronnie, what's up? Hopefully you're doing well. Doing all right. I'm doing fine. Just been talking about different stuff that happened. Like my run-in with the bees yesterday. That was fun. Quote-unquote fun. It looks like all death sludge down there. No, no, just bees outside in the front yard. Um, we had, we had like, kind of like honey bees, pollen bees in the backyard for the different flowers we have, which is fine. But then out front, like between the garage and our front door, we have like a little walkway and there's some bushes there. And we had some yellow jackets set up home in like a ground nest. And I was like, well, I'll just let them be because it's, it's getting, you know, let them be, ha. Huh? Boo. But uh, I was gonna let them be as their selves there. They weren't causing any problems, but then they attacked my dad's dog. So I'm like, okay, it's time for them to die. So Carmen leaves, and it's dark. So like, it's getting dark. I'm like, okay, it's perfect time because they're all flying back to the nest. And that's a constant stream of bees coming and going. So I figured I'm gonna get hit. I'm gonna get stung at least two to three times. No biggie. I've been stung before by pollen bees. It's basically like it stings like a little bit like pinch when you first get stung and then it burns and aches for about 15, 20 minutes. So it goes away. No biggie. So directions on the can. It's a brand new full can. A spray it says stand 20 feet away. That's a lie. This thing only goes like seven feet. So I start spraying it. It only comes out as liquid at first. So it's all going down the hole. No problem. Then it starts foaming. And so I just empty the entire can. It's like, so there's like six, seven inches of like foam on top of this hive. You know, the, the exit where they're all at, bees are flying in, they're landing on it, everything else are dying left and right. So, okay, can's empty, go inside, no problem. So I'm halfway between the nest and my garage door, which is open so I can get in the house. When a yellow jacket just like bullseyes my wrists and we're like, it hit a vein on top of a nerve bundle. So it was like instant pain, like shot up my elbow and down my fingers. <laughs> it was like, oh my God. So the thing is with like pollen bees and honey bees is that when they sting you, you can brush them off, literally just brush like your hand off it and you'll dislodge the bee and the stinger a lot of times. Yellow jackets are jerks. They are aggressive and they are like wasps. They are very close to wasps. So they grab on and don't let go. So like it wouldn't like I couldn't brush this thing off. So I actually had to grab it with my fingers, crush it and then rip it off my wrist. And because it hit directly on a vein, I was like bleeding. <laughs> it was like, oh, my God. So I had the venom pumped in there, hit the nerve on top of it. So it's like yeah, I have nerve pain going up and down my arm. And then like the bee venom's kicking in, too. So like, oh, great. So 
put ice on it, try to stop the swelling. It like probably about the size of like a half dollar uh, coin. Like just basically like swelled up and rashed up around there, so I had to take two Benadryl. I've never, I'm not allergic to bees as far as I've ever been aware, because like I said, I've been stung before. It's never been a problem. But uh, maybe it's just like conjunction of hitting that vein and injecting it like right into the bloodstream caused a problem or something. But uh, today it's still sore. Like if I touch it, it feels like it's just been stung. But if I don't do anything, like if I don't touch it against anything, it's fine. So I was looking up online and apparently the venom can stay in the system for like three days. So that bee sting probably is going to hurt for the next two more days. I went out and checked them. Check the hive, they're all dead. So I was like, okay, no problem. Mission accomplished. Hmm. All right, so that's what I've been looking for. So that was my exciting night. And yesterday I also watched a great documentary because I was telling uh, Nimix about it briefly. It's called Dig, which follows around two bands uh, for like seven years. The Brian Jonestown Massacre and the Dandy Warhols, which is funny because like I remember when I first saw it, I think the documentary came out like 2004, I want to say. I knew who the Dandy Warhols were. Uh, my friend Danny at the time, he had no idea who the hell they were. So I was familiar with their music, so it was really fascinating to see like the behind the scenes of like them getting signed to the record company and then trying to make it in the music business and all this other stuff. And then you see like the Brian Jones Town Massacre. It's like this really cool kind of like 60s style band and just their band leader, like their singer Anton, who's just like He's got severe mental issues, severe drug issues, personality disorders. He's like picking fights with his band members. He does everything he can to sabotage his band from being successful. While well, as the Dandy Warhols are basically like, okay, we got a record deal. Now we got to shoot a music video. We got to try to promote it. And the, the label doesn't like us because we didn't make him a billion dollars overnight. So we're getting ignored. And it's really fascinating to watch these two differing bands go in these two different directions. Like eventually their album, like the Dandy Warhols album gets released in Europe and it's huge in Europe, which is how I knew about it. So, I mean, it got played everywhere nonstop. So they were like, they're thinking, well, we suck in America. Let's just go to Europe and tour around for a little bit. And everywhere they go, they're like, they're selling out all their, all their concerts and people know their songs and they're hearing on the radio. They're like, what the hell? You know, it's like we're treated like dirt in America. We go to Europe, we're treated like rock stars. This is what what's happening. So it's really kind of fun to watch that and like to see, you know, just how the other band just falls apart. Like the guy's like psychotically obsessed with the singer of the Dandy Warhols. He's like, he's like, dude, we got to have like this Oasis Blur type, you know, rivalry. And and Courtney, the guy, the singer from the Dandy Warhols, is like, uh, we got to get popular first before we can do something like that. That's just stupid. So if you think you've never heard the Dandy Warhols music at all, if you've ever seen the show Mythbusters, they composed the opening and closing music for that show as an example. Um, and the the song, Not If You're Last Junkie on the Earth, which is the first song I ever heard them play, was actually, you learn it's actually written for Anton, the, the lead of, the singer of the other band, the Brian Jonestown Massacre, about like, Hey, like you're a junkie, get your act together. You know, it's like heroin is just so past age. It's, you know, you're not cool. You're just a jerk. You're killing yourself. Stop. And of course, he doesn't get that message at all. He's like, man, he's just like, 
his music's all poppy, he sucks, he's sold out. It's like, he doesn't get, like, the songs about you, like, in your heroin addiction, and you need to clean up your act. It's like, wow. But you can actually find the entire documentary on YouTube. It's like, I really recommend it. It's fascinating. And the whole thing about it, too, is, like, what I really think is really cool about documentaries is that you have all this insane amount of footage, like seven years across two different bands and they had to edit this down to an hour and 46 minutes but that's the link to the documentary if you want to watch it i rec i really recommend you check it out if you're not really a fan of the music it's just fascinating to watch these two bands go in just completely different directions and i die because it didn't work Oh, maybe I can if I can get out of this. Nope. If you want to oh, what? it's stop. Oh my gosh, it puts me way back here. That's lame. Hoverboard races in Blackwater City on planet Rilgar. Yeah, I know. I was trying to do a long jump, which is you hold down crouch and then you do jump. Sometimes, though, the game doesn't quite do it. Like, you have to have enough forward momentum. If you don't, you just hover jumps. Like, you just hover down instead, which is not what you want to do. I gotta say though, it's kind of fun playing it like a good old-fashioned platformer again. I mean, I've been playing Spyro and stuff, but it wasn't really like a platformer challenge. And I've had, I've played the Ratchet and Clank games before. I've played the third one, I remember. And then I also played the uh, PSP one for a little bit, and I thought that was okay. The new one looks really good on PlayStation 5. My only big gripe with it is that it runs 30 frames per second, but Everything it what's really annoying about this generation coming up, which is ridiculous if you think about it. PlayStation 5 and the new Xbox are coming out in less than two months, supposedly. We don't know the release date. We just know it's November. We don't know the release date exactly. We don't know the price. For PlayStation, you have to enter a lottery to be considered, not approved, considered to get a pre-order. Because you have to supply your social media information as well as your PlayStation ID, so they can look at you and see if you've ever been saying anything about them, or if you've been really kissing ass and sucking up to them, then you'll most likely get one. Uh, if you're a influencer, that's gonna help too. So they can basically cherry pick who gets to get the system, because they're gonna be in short supply. Doesn't sound good. This is like the wonkiest, craziest cycle I've ever heard since like the Saturn surprise launching. But uh, the gameplay of this looked really cool. The new Ratchet and Clank game looked pretty neat. Let's see what this bad boy does. Yes. Oh, good. So I can go back and fight that one guy on the planet. Gadgetron Trespasser is guaranteed to work on Gadgetron's line of Invinso lock security doors. Lasers are mounted on each ring of the Invinso lock. Aim the lasers at the receptors on the outside ring to turn them green. All receptors must be green before the Invinso lock will open. Use 
the left analog stick to control the trespasser. Push up and down to select which ring is active. Push left and right to rotate the ring. It only allows three hops and then it kills you. Okay, interesting. So I saw Tenet the other day, as I mentioned earlier, and really liked it. And already I've seen reviews of it online where people just don't understand the movie at all. And it's the same people who think that the Matrix is too complex. Like, I don't understand the Matrix or Inception, but I just like the action parts. That, were, that was neat. It's like, how stupid are you? Now, admittedly, this movie does get kind of complex with its whole plots about, like, different time inversion and stuff like that, like how many versions of a person could be existing at one time. But then I start seeing people on YouTube making videos where they're like, oh yeah, here's like the whole timeline of this character for the movie. And it's like, it's completely wrong. I'm like, y did you not pay attention to the film or? It's like, how did you miss this key part? I still recommend people go see it. It's a it's a pretty cool movie. It'll it'll melt your brain when you stop to think about how things work at parts. Oh jeez, here he is, right back here. <laughs> it's him, Skid McMarks. That man from the Infobot. In the flesh, little dude. You guys get a load of that epic space battle I was in? We saw you screaming for help. Uh, that was like a war cry. My agent and I got ambushed on the way to hoverboard practice. Did he survive the crash, sir? Yeah, he's okay, but I've had a little trouble getting back to my ship due to my sprained ankle. Oh, come on. If you can take out all the sand sharks, I just might have a spare hoverboard for you. We'd love to help you, Mr. McMarks, but Ratchet and I need to find Captain... One of your boards? Hmm. I've always wanted a decent hoverboard. Well, all right. You just keep that foot elevated. The sand sharks must die. I will make them extinct for you, sir.
all the money. Can destroy? It looks like it might be destructible, I'm not sure. Uh love bomb. It is. Neat. I found a secret. I'm an awesome player with mediocre skills. Okay, that was interesting. Oh no! All right, so I'm using a wireless, I'm using a PlayStation 4 controller right now, and it's wireless. And uh, apparently it doesn't give you any notification that your controller's about to die. So, I have a 10 foot USB cable. I'm getting it right now. Plug that in. There we go. Nice. All right, let's see. Headphones. Good. But I need to use the restroom. So we're going to play some Elisa Dragoon music there while we wait here. I'll be back as soon as I can. Please hold tight. I will be right back. We'll put up the uh, BRB screen. Hang tight. Be right back.
All right, I am back. Sorry about the wait. Ooh, it's amazing. It's like it's getting hot in this room. So. PlayStation's getting pretty hot itself. I've done like an instant read thermometer. Just have like have it on there so if I can possibly get like a reading on it. I don't think it's going to work right. It's like physically hot to touch. It's like 104. Slowly climbing up. Okay, it's not too bad, but it's like, yeah, I can't leave your hand on it. So right now I have like the cover off because I was doing like so much repairs and stuff with it. So if something went wrong, I didn't want to, have to like put it all back together and stuff. So the power is like exposed, like the internals are. And the power supply unit itself is like getting really hot, like physically touching. I can't have my hand on there for like longer than five seconds, it starts to burn. So I am thinking I might have to replace that power supply unit too. There we go. I was wondering if it was gonna trigger an automatic cutscene. Here, man, catch. A brand new Z3000. You can't even buy these. Well, I gotta pay. Catch you dudes at the hoverboard races. You've just acquired a Gadgetron Z3000 hoverboard. Use your new hoverboard at the racetrack in Blackwater City on Planet Real Golf. 
All right then. I think I shall. First of all, I want to go back to that tree logging planet. So I gotta say, it's a fun little game. Solid platformer, you know? You get used to like having modern things like an auto center button that doesn't really quite work too well. It's the same button that puts you in first person mode, so you gotta kind of tap it. Oh, that controls just fine. Oh, just barely made that. Okay, got to switch back to grapple. Not to be confused with scrapple.
You just poop out a robot? You sure showed him. I suppose I did. Is your current occupation leaving a rotten taste in your mouth? Then you need to know about BTS, Blog Tactical Research Station. Hi, I'm Supreme Executive Chairman Drek, and we here at BTS are seeking motivated individuals to fill positions in these exciting careers. Grind Boot Tester, Warhead Assembly Technician, Mutant Animal Husbandry, Robot Repair Man, Suck Cannon Test Dummy, and Administrative Assistant. So call BTS. Build our weapons while you build your future. I'm calling BTS today. Now we're talking. Did you see all the cool gadgets they're making? Let's go get some. No, we must continue our search for Captain Quark. You're absolutely right. I am? Sure. We need to find Quark. Although when we find him, wouldn't it be nice to be able to tell him where Chairman Drek is? I suppose. Well, we go to the space station and talk to the scientists. They work for Drek, so they're bound to know where he is. I am unsure about your logic. Ah, uh, you think too much. Come on, let's go. So I can find a picture. It's really weird, like, they changed Ratchet how he looks in Japan. Give him like super bushy eyebrows and like other weird stuff. Yeah, I don't know why they did this, but I'll show you real quick. So Ratchet was redesigned in Japan. He's got like different markings on his ears and stuff, but he's like really crazy bushy eyebrows. Like this, like this is our design here. So you think this is from the third game and this is what he looks like in Japan. He's got like smaller pupils, different eyes there, humongous bushy eyebrows and his ears have different markings too. I don't know what the cultural reasoning was behind this, but that's what they did to him in Japan. It looks really bizarre, more like a Muppet. All right, back to the game. Hmm. So I have the hoverboard, but let me go there just yet. It's kind of interesting. Don't know why that is, but... I got some great bargains for you today. Oh, that's a nice one. Taunter. Know your enemies and lure them into traps and ambushes with this obnoxious noise maker.
Oh, it's a flamethrower, okay. that ammo real fast. Need a little help with these enemies? Try a Gadgetron Taunter. Available at any Gadgetron vendor. But I didn't buy it! Try the old trespasser. Jump, then press and hold the X button again while in the air to fly. Sounds like the, uh, like the narrator's voice for Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast, like telling you, like, press A on the jump pads to jump. Man, you're stupid.
Okay, so you can't side jump. Hopefully they regenerate. So apparently they all decided to just kamikaze right into... Yep, they do good. Right into that, like, gate that I needed. Open, they just charge right into it. Nothing up there, okay. Something. The Gadgetron Hydro Displacer uses Insta faucets and Insta drains. Using it, you can drain and fill pools. Our sensors do not detect any on this space station. Hydro Displacer. Great. I always wanted one of those. I guess. Sure. Everyone does. Hi there, Fuzzball. Hey, got the taunter. All right. Did you know you can place any gadget or weapon on your quick select? Just pause and choose quick select from the menu. All right, shell.
This shuttle has an autopilot which will take you to a decommissioned large warship. Our scanners indicate that there may be useful technology on Do the board. level first, moron, then come back. We shouldn't have to tell you this. Let's do a manual save just to make sure. Looks like it's been yeah, over an hour since I last did, so yeah. Probably good to do. Complete all the cases for the stat recorder. Cool. That's awesome to hear. So is that like having to pertain to like the sequel thing that you're working on like before or or something different entirely? That's fine. Workflow steps basically they need to be interpreted to guide the person reporting to the next step. So it's to help you not to know football too much. <laughs> Hey, if you can simplify the process at all, that's good. So that's fine. Got... Cross there. I'm still blocking. Uh, well, I mean, you definitely want to make it easy to use. I mean, especially if people are going to be using it. You want to make it as user friendly as possible. Shocker, I know.
And that's always like the challenging thing is making something so anybody can use it. Because you as a developer, you get you understand how it works because you programmed it, you made how it works, you know? But then like to hand it out to a layperson, they have to be able to do it. And I've worked with too many programs that were just like what were you thinking? Like, apparently you were like OCD because you have to do like certain steps like three times in a row, something crazy just to make something function. It's like, okay. It's where public testing can really help out or having other people like, hey, you've never used this before. Tell me what you think. <laughs> Which can be good and bad. Oh, there's no mesh there. And I'm back at the start of the level, because the game hates me. It has some very poor checkpoint systems. Like, none, pretty much. So has there been, like, any more interest on, like, the football app? Like, for other schools possibly picking it up? That sucks. Well, of course, you know, it's being a weird COVID year, too. I mean, I can kind of see why that might not be the best thing right now. Especially if, like, a lot of places' programs are, like, closed down for the year. You being in the South and all, it's like, it's all, like, gotta have football no matter what. Up here, we're like, eh. We might not want to do that. It's like the same people who go to yard sales are like, oh my god, I've been looking for this for years, and it's like you're practically giving away with the price. Oh my god, this is a my life is complete with this whole thing here you're selling, and they put it down, walk away, and never come back. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Oh, that sucks. Got off a shot as he died. Lame again! You gave a year of free use? And they still wouldn't bite? What the hell? I mean, like... That's crazy, for one. I mean, like, I was thinking, like, try it out for a month or two. It's like, you're like, oh, use it for the entire season. It's like, and they still won't bite? That's their loss. School to school, they all love it. You can change the application to comedy new features requested, and they still won't bite. Oh, thank you, game. That's what I wanted to do. Just slowly hover to my possible death. Not do the crouch jump. And because the camera is a physical object, it won't go where I need it right now. There we go. Oh, wonky control. A lot of people using it came from the first school, and they know it so well, they want where they go. Right, I mean, it's like they, they use it, they like it, they're like, yeah, we need more of it. This is great. They understand the value. Alright, buddy, I need you to actually, like, do the jump this time. Can you do it? No! Okay, so how am I gonna get up there?
They seem to be broken at all. No, they cannot. And I can just take multiple hits. Okay, one more advertisement starts on Monday. Fingers crossed. Uh, previous map. Okay, so we really need to explore here and find out that one place I'm missing. Holy crap. Now, that's like, is that your out of pocket or is that like income coming in from the one school? Because it seems like this is probably your out of pocket to advertise because it's not cheap. And can you write it off as a tax expense, you know, as a business expense? Because we were able to do that. Well, that's one of the things we discovered with alpacas is like, Apparently there's specific laws for livestock and stuff like that, and you could write them off as a loss for like five years and get all your money back that you're we're spending on it. So that's exactly what we did, like, because like, okay, we need advertising, we need a website, a domain, and all this other good stuff here, and, and it's like, and we were able to write that all off as tax expenses. So people are seeing it, they're clicking through, right? Like, you're actually getting, like, uh, clicks for it, I guess? Oh, now it's letting me do it, okay. Okay, so... People are interested, at least, so that's good. It's not just, like, views, they're actually clicking on it to, to find out more. And you, you got your sexy face on that advertisement, too. You think they had to get everybody calling. Like, we must buy this app from this handsome man. The sexual goddess of football knowledge and programming ability will help me lead my team to victory, but not against his school because he has to win. Makes you wonder if something's wrong. They don't know how to contact me. Yeah, it's like one of those things like just double check the phone number. Well, I don't know if you have a phone number on there, like if you have a cell business or a landline for that, because we did for my old alpaca business. But this was like 12 years ago, 12, 13 years ago, back when landlines were still in use. So... A different time, but like email and so forth. I don't know if you have it going to like a, a Gmail or something, or if you have your own uh, exchange server set up at home. You seem like the type of person who might do that. Like set up your own domain and, and mail exchange. Email, website. Okay, future... Yeah, it's like, it'd just be like a shame, like, you go in, you check the settings, like, oh, it's like, uh, it's, everything's on a blacklist. It's like, oh my god, no. My business. I've had, I've seen that happen, actually. People are like, I set up my domain, I don't know what's happening, like, why I'm not getting emails. It's like, you blacklisted everybody. Holy crap, jeez, you do not get, like, invincibility frames. Hey, you got it. At least you get spam, so you know, therefore, it is working indeed. So that's a good sign. Ironically enough. Just 
There's a comedian named James Beach, I think is his name. It's a crazy dude. He's fun though, because he actually like, goes through and replies to spam emails just to see what happens, and it's absolute hilarity. He actually did like a TED talk on it. I'm trying to find it real quick. I don't know what happened to it all since it's being delisted. TED talk spam. Yeah, what in the world? It's like you usually put in TED talk and it's like, nope, we're gonna bury this guy and his results. We don't like him all of a sudden. It's like, uh, why? It's weird. I wonder if, like, YouTube just totally, like, nicks this thing off of the platforms. I mean, it's a TED, it was a legitimate TED talk that this guy did in, like, replying to spam emails and just, like, talk about, like, all the crazy things and replies you get from bots and, and so forth. And it's just, like, it's gone. What in the world happened now? Like, I don't like uh, we're looking at this screen, it's just me standing there. Here we go. I had to go to actually to tedtalk.com to find it. it. It's yeah, it's 404. I wonder what the hell happened here because it just got, it got nailed by something. Which is a shame because it was like really funny to watch. So I don't know what happened because it was up like two days ago when I saw this, the guy do it. And uh, yeah, so apparently I guess he was like talking about a uh, a supermarket kept like sending him crap, like advertising like a new store. And he's like, okay, I'm going to have fun with this. <laughs> he just like starts replying back and forth and um, See if we can find it. Looks like somebody archived it on their own site. I was like, oh. Perfect. Okay, yeah. So if you want to see something funny, I had to go. Some guy archived it because apparently it's been scrubbed from TED Talk. Um, and I don't know why and all of YouTube, but this guy has it archived from like four years ago on his own page. Basically trying to get views. He's had he's had like five over 50,000 500,000 views So he's basically just trying to get views for his channel just by hosting other popular content, but in this case it worked out because Managed to find it, but yeah, I definitely recommend to, to check it out because it's hilarious All right, here we go Sorry, I'm pulling something up real fast. I'll get back to the game. I promise we will get back. We're not just gonna be standing here. Look, I'll, I'll move around. La, 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 la. There we go. Oh no, I better run back out. No, it's there. I can't see the screen right now. Okay, here we go. Continuing on with the game. It's like one of the games I wanted to actually like, uh, I was thinking about playing was Maximo, which is like a continuation of the Ghouls and Ghosts games on PlayStation 2. 
and the problem is like the entire game's played from like a weird perspective like this like the ground is flat but the entire camera is tilted at weird things you can't get like a direct lock on like behind you so half of the difficulty is trying to basically get the camera right so you can complete weird jumps and stuff so I was like, this is just too frustrating. It'd be too disorienting for people to watch. So it's like, we're going to pass on that. Love of Doom, I'm out. Okay, brute force. It's kind of interesting, like, the, the game has been pretty easy so far, then all of a sudden we get to this stage and it's like, difficulty spike. Thank you for selecting our automated self-destruct feature. Vessel annihilation sequence initiated. Please remove all personal belongings. Oh yeah, he's got lots of stand-up like that. Definitely check him out on YouTube and watch his other routines. Like, he was on Conan. Talking about, like, replying to a wrong spam, like a, like a wrong text message or, like, a wrong email for some guy checking out an apartment. A contractor wanting to do, like, pool work. It's all sorts of good stuff. This is Darla Gratz reporting live from Blackwater City. We've just learned that Captain Quark will be presenting the grand prize at the Intergalactic Hoverboard Championship, which will be held here over the next few days. In related news, this planet has recently been suffering from an infestation of strange amoeboid creatures. The city's administration has assured this reporter that every step has been taken to eradicate these nuisances. Darla Gratch, Channel 2 News. I'm sure she's fine. See that? Yes. <laughs> wow, that was graphic. I didn't think you could show that on television. I think. I was talking about the hoverboard. I see your question, Twalus, so I'll address it in a second. So Twalus asked a question for Wurzel. When did grilling romaine lettuce became a good thing? And how do you make people see the nonsense that it is to grill lettuce? Um Grilling romaine lettuce has never become a good thing. It's never become a good trend ever. I mean, unless you're like, even like Rachel Ray's sycophants would still be like, no, that's, that's stupid. What are you talking about? What's wrong with you? Um, so how do you make people see the nonsense that is to grill lettuce? Simple. If you see someone grilling lettuce, lettuce, slap them across the face, yell no, uh, rub their faces in it, which be careful because, you know, you don't want to give them like, you know, permanent damage there and get arrested for assault with a deadly weapon being in the grill. But, uh, but yeah, it's like, just slap them, slap it out of their hands, yell no bad uh go through their house see if they have anything with rachel ray on it and just uh burn it right in front of them Bought a bag of romaine lettuce it has a recipe for it has a recipe for grilling oh was this like rachel ray sponsored like rachel ray brand romaine lettuce i mean i have like romaine in my fridge i used it as like a holder container for my thai pork uh you know, it's like I said, like basil chicken, like Thai basil chicken. I made Thai basil pork instead, which is just as tasty. So I'm doing keto. So I'd eat the fat and all that other crazy stuff. I've actually lost eight pounds. Yay, me. So it's like, 
so I was using like the romaine lettuce, like, you know, it's like the, the big whole hearts themselves to scoop it in there and use it as like a burrito holder type deal, like a taco and just eat it that way. No point on my packaging for my romaine lettuce did it have directions to grill. No such insanity would be upon that. And if I ever saw a bag of low rain that tells you how to grill it, I would just throw it away. I would spike it onto the ground like a football in the middle of a grocery store and just like make a scene. It's like, no way. Oh, goody, a link. I gotta check this out. Taylor Farms. So they are the offending, the offending people here. Say hello. I think I just might. Twitter. Here we go. Can I message them? I don't think I can message them, unfortunately. Let me see if I can possibly do that. Messages. Cannot be messaged. Boo! I was gonna like just write him a message on Twitter right now. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? People are doing Satan's work. You should take it back to the store. Tell them you can't grill it. Ask them why they're high. Facebook. Can I reach them there? Yes, I can. Hold on. Okay, here we go. All right. Hello, one of my friends. I can't type and talk at the same time, apparently. Told me that he bought a bag of Taylor Farms Romaine lettuce. And on the back, it contained instructions Yeah, I really have problems trying to talk and type at the same time. To grill said product. I would like to add like to tell you or whoever is in charge of that to please stop listening or paying. Rachel Ray to advise you on such insanity as lettuce should never be in contact with a grill, no matter how schizophrenic you are. Semicolon. Also including meth benders, where you come to in a Wendy's parking lot, let's see, parking lot, dragging a mannequin. I have no idea how to spell mannequin. Mannequin, oh, save me, I'm a terrible speller. Eh, dragging a, let's say, a dress dummy around like it's your girlfriend while yelling about why she is leaving you because you thought it was perfectly sane to grill lettuce. There we go. I'll have to let you know on the next stream what they reply back with or if they just probably probably gonna block me. That's what I expect, but uh, we'll see what they say. We'll see how that goes. Mannequin. There we go. Yeah, I'm a terrible speller. Auto, like, autocorrect and, like, spell check has saved my life. Because back in the day, you had to pick up dictionaries 
It's one of the things like Carmen and I were talking about the other day. Well, for one, I tried to get her to play Revolution X two player with me and she like almost was going to stab me with whatever was closest to grab. So that didn't work out too well. Uh, then second, uh, we were talking about like old things that like kids, the new generation wouldn't get like days before Google uh, encyclopedias, not being Wikipedia, but actually being stuff on books. Like, you'd be researching your school project and look something up and it'd be talking about, hopefully one day man would land on the moon. You know, it's like, oh, great. Another thing we can put in there is uh, having to actually grab a dictionary to learn how to spell certain words. Alice's were the bee's knees back in the day. That, uh, Guinness World Book of Records, that was a big thing when I was a kid, too. I was like, wow, and now it's like, yeah, we just call that mental illness or speed running, which is one of the same. Scrambled porn. If you wanted to know what was on television, you didn't have, you, know, you had to look at the newspaper or TV guide to see what was on. You didn't have a channel that would tell you what it was or like it's a DVR guide. And also a liar. Well, did you hear, like, he basically, he tried this, he tried, he was, he was legitimately suing Guinness World Records because they stripped him of all his records because he's found to be a cheater on multiple fronts. And uh, he threatened to sue them, and they backed down, and they reinstated him and made an apology video. Yeah, it's crazy. Hi there, fuzzball. Mind glove. Be sneaky and set exploding traps for your enemies. Uh, there's a guy, Carl Yops. I mean, it's like I'm always heavy with the links and stuff on my channel because I always think it's really good to see stuff like this. And he actually did a video on Go Billy on Mitchell because, like, he, Mitchell actually like threatened to sue. I think he threatened to sue him. Yeah. Hello, are you he threatened to sue this guy because he reported on Billy Mitchell being a, like a, a fraud. Same thing as he did with uh, Todd Rogers. So what do you do? Like, like as a as a response to like, hey, I'm gonna sue you for defamation. He's like, he makes like a 28 minute video just calling him out, like calling him a piece of shit, while being polite about it. But I definitely suggest checking out that video. It's fun because it goes through and just talks about. Yeah, he looks very squat. I wonder if he's formatted correctly. But it goes through and he just like talks about all things in the lawsuit and he's breaking it down like it's like, you know, you have to apologize and say that Billy never cheated. You know, you're written undertaking you have to write a you have to delete videos that was published on the twentieth of July twenty twenty talking about Billy Mitchell. You have to take a written like written promise to never repeat any of the allegations contained in the video so you can't say like you like you can't prove that billy mitchell cheated so it's like i can't prove it well here's all the evidence and he just lays it out here's all the video proof that he's using emulators to cheat and it was like it was the ultimate middle finger to that guy's lawyers like billy mitchell's lawyers like you want to sue me well go fuck yourself you know it's like here's the evidence that billy mitchell's a cheater i'm doubling down i'll see you in court it's like but of course he does it with like pure tact no swearing nothing it's it's great so i definitely recommend to put that on your watch later list but this is actually the uh, playstation 2 port of ratchet and clank because the original playstation 2 disc because i have the last backwards compatible model for the PlayStation 3 that plays PlayStation 2 games, and it uses software emulation. And they didn't have the actual PlayStation 2 chip inside. So it turns out that the model that I have doesn't like this game. So as soon as you touch a single button, it locks up and crashes the entire PlayStation 3. So I had to buy the PlayStation 3 version of this game, which is widescreen support and like 720p, 1080p output. So it's like, it's been a month long journey of just trying to get just trying to play this game at all. First tried to play it and like I said, the problem where it wouldn't launch at all and then I finally got it working. 
And then it became a bigger hassle there trying to get it because it started crashing and then it wouldn't recognize my controller, so I had to get a different controller for it. Then it stopped recognizing the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi. So I had to take apart the system, fix those problems, uh, reconnected it so the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth started working. So then I get that all put back together, get going, figure out and find out that the game's not going to work no matter what I do. It works on a PlayStation 2, but it doesn't work on a PlayStation 3. My model I have is just my luck because I have a rare model, it turns out, I guess. So then I go and I buy the collection here. If you want to buy Ratchet and Clank for PlayStation 3, it's $15. Or you can spend $20 and buy all three games for the PlayStation 2 on your, on your PS3 remastered like this with the better graphics for like $5 more. So like, duh. So I bought all three games. I plug it into my splitter, my HDMI splitter. Old one broke, got a replacement, supposed to be a new, better one. It says, yes, it handles PlayStation 3. Plug it in, strips out HDCP. You have video, you have no audio. It's like, son of a bitch. So you could watch the gameplay, but you couldn't hear the music that's playing right now at all. So that's a problem. So I had to buy a new splitter, an old one that I had originally that I had four years ago and worked. Get that plugged in. You can hear, you can see everything great. It's no problem. I finally get a DualShock 3 controller from eBay. It arrives broken. The rough jump, the left thumbstick is sticking up and it rattles and it crunches. It's grinding. It's just busted. So I had to send that back and I'm using a PlayStation 4 controller wirelessly plugged in right now to play this game. So it's been like a month long odyssey just to play Ratchet and Clank. Why? Because my girlfriend likes this game and I'm trying to make her happy. <laughs> it's like the things you do when you love somebody. Wow, okay. Well, that worked. Yeah, so exactly, it's like, I got, I went through all this trouble. I want to play it. Well, I also want to be able to do things like play. Yeah, I know it's like trade off hit, but I get the health out of it. But I also want to be able to do Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge. So I can actually go through and do speedruns of that. So I can do PlayStation 3 games. But of course, certain games send out like weird kill signals for HDCP that just does strip. But sometimes it messes up with OBS, so it can cause weird temporary sound issues. Like this game actually sounded really weird for like the first 20 seconds. Like it was popping and crunching, like when I had that defective retro tink. And then it stopped and it's playing just fine. But. Um, and then sometimes like it'll just like cause a green screen like like on Elgato and you have to like turn off OBS and restart it and then it works. So it's, it's kind of a hassle to, to stream PlayStation 3. But it's like, hey, I went through all this trouble. I'm going to do it. It will happen. I've never played this one. I played the third game, Ratchet and Clank game. So this is the first time I have, like, I'm actually playing this completely blind right now. Well, that's an interesting setup for bad guys. Yeah, so it was a huge, huge undertaking just to get PlayStation 3 be able to stream this again. And I sent back the defective controller, the DualShock 3, because I really want to have one because certain games, like I tried to stream Killzone 2, and I ran into a, a problem that you have to have a 6-axis controller in order to play the game, because I was using, I think it was my PlayStation 4 controller, because the PS3 one I have is generic right now. It has massive dead zones. So... You come across a part in Killzone 2 very early in the first level where you have to 
hold down like the trigger buttons and then physically rotate your controller with the six axis motion controls in order to like turn a valve to open a gate to progress through the game. So I got stuck right there. It's like, oh, come on. <laughs> so I need to have a DualShock 3 controller anyway. Can't get to them, okay. That's just gonna be fun to watch. Yeah! Is there anything back here where these guys were? No, nothing. Okay. Coolio's. I always thought Coolio should have had his own cereal and literally called it Coolio's. One, two, three, four, got something brand new for you today with lots of fiber and sugar included. No, no, no. I was trying to change my weapon like before it jumped off. I was like, I'll change to the flamethrower and uh, apparently that just takes you back right where you were. Let's try this again. With Johnny Cab. Sneaky. I got some great bargains for you today. Still short. It won't be mine. So I gotta say, it's really weird, I've said it before, this is basically gonna be a stream of me just repeating myself a lot, which is fine, but it's like, it's really weird that we're about to have the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox, whatever the hell it decides to call itself, launching in like two months, we still don't know the price, we still don't know when it's gonna launch exactly, we just know it's November, we don't know when, so... It's really bizarre that we have this. PlayStation 5, actually, Sony has a lottery right now for getting a PlayStation 5. You have to apply in for it, including your social media and your uh, PlayStation Network ID. 
so they can basically vet you to see if you're an influencer, if you're a big streamer, you'll definitely get one. Uh, and basically, if you've ever written anything bad about Sony, which I have, you wouldn't get one because it's basically it's not a guarantee that if you get picked that you'll be able to apply to basic. You're basically applying. You're winning a lottery to apply to get a pre-order for PlayStation 5. What they're doing is they're just basically trying to give to influencers and people with high visibility to drive up more interest for it. It's really scummy. That's what they're doing. That said, the the Ratchet and Clanking looks pretty good. It runs 30 frames per second, which is kind of sad because everyone's focused on 4K, which you really can't do 4K 60 right now. You can barely do 4K 30. I don't care about 4K at all. If you uh, what I'm interested in is frame rate, 60 frames per second. 1080p games look amazing. I play um, like even games like Control. You can run that 1080p 60 frames a second. It looks amazing on your PC. You know, you can bump it up. I bumped it up to 4K, down rendered it, and looks even more stunning. But it's just it's not needed. So it's it's kind of a shame that developers are like, we gotta do 4K everything and 8K and all this. And like literally right now, the Nvidia just came out with new graphics cards, the uh, 30s line, so the 30, 70, 80, and 90, which are like 500, 750, and thousand five hundred dollars respectively right now is what they'll be when they launch and those can do 8k 60 i mean those are like beefy cards like the uh, nvidia uh, rtx 3090 is a 24 gig card it takes up three pci slots which means you have a special computer for it but you could run that you can run games in 8k 60 which nothing pretty much supports it's overkill it's it's super feature proofing but even their lower cards, like the 3080, is still like $750. It's like 8 gigs. Either It's like 10 or 8 gigs. But it, it draws like almost 500 watts of power, just about, to, to run it. And that can do 4K 120 frames a second. But you can guarantee those cards are not going to be in the new Xbox. They're not going to be in the new PlayStation. It's just annoying. Ratchet. I'm kidding. Sorry, he's not for sale. What's a rhino anyway? Hardcore drug man. What did you just say to me? R Y N O. Rip ya a new one. Why, that's the most powerful missile launcher in the galaxy. I know it's worth a lot of volts. He must have stolen it from the blog. Stolen? Book trash can. Did I say anything about it being hot? You better watch your mouth or I'll. Wait, don't tell me. Rip ya a new one. Yeah, that's a new game plus item. So basically, and also PlayStation 5 has come out that it basically through other vendors like Ubisoft, that it's not going to be backwards compatible with PlayStation 1, 2, or 3. It's only going to be backwards compatible with PlayStation 4, which is a shame. Because the Xbox is promising to be backwards compatible with the Xbox original, the Xbox 360, the Xbox One series, and the, whatever they're doing now. So that does make it interesting, because I mean, I'm not still looking to get one because they don't have any games I want to play on either system, to be honest. I'm not looking to buy a PlayStation 5 or a new Xbox. But eventually, when my Xbox 360 fails, I know I'm probably going to get the new Xbox just because it can play all those games. It can do everything I want.
Took everybody to come bum rushing me at once, but uh It's been a while since I did a save. I should probably do that. I have no idea because I mean this game has very very rough checkpoints I do see auto saves, but I don't know where they go exactly Lasers apparently stop the suck cannon. Okay, good to know. I learned something today. Oh, come on. Nope, can't fling it up there, okay. Oh, come on, game. And it puts me all the way back here. This game's got serious checkpoint problems. Ammo boxes reload. It's one. <laughs> I 
Must get golden bolt. Or not. Okay, let's see where this goes. Welcome to the Hovercon Intergalactic Hoverboard Competition. You survive, so you win instantly. Zoomerator to the winner of this competition. A platinum zoomerator. Perhaps that will be the proof of your accomplishments that Skid's agent requires. Wait. Do you guys mean Skid McMarks? Yeah, Skid couldn't make it, so we're here to, you know, fill in for him. Guess we'll see about that. Instantly, no idea what's going on, you just start racing. Gotta love it. Okay, yeah. At least it's fast loading, that's good. Oh, come on. It's gonna be frustrating. So apparently I've entered the death race. Do I get points for running over children and elderly? Oh, now I watch Death Race 2000 again. Now I really want to watch that movie. So much fun. If you screw up at all in this race, you are instantly last. You are not going to get back to first. This has to be run perfectly, apparently. Yeah, I was in first down, like, instantly fourth. That's crazy. 
This is like worse rubber banding than Mario Kart. You have to get first? Oh my god. I hit continue. You have to run three perfect laps. You cannot screw up. And I have to win it in order to move the game forward, too. That's a bunch of garbage. Oh, but for now... We've reached the end of the stream, so thanks for hanging out, everybody. I do appreciate it. Uh, so, of course, big shout-outs to everybody who was here tonight here. So, to Nimix, Ronnie, Twalis, and also looks like I had a follow here as well. Ryan is retro. Thank you very much for the follow. Hope to see you back here soon, and you're always welcome to lurk if that's what you're doing. It's always cool. So, I like to stream at 8 p.m. Eastern Central Time. If you don't know when that is, just type that into Google and it'll tell you for wherever you are in the world. Also, check me out on Twitter at Worsel555. So, uh, basically around, usually about two or three hours before I stream, I'll tell you what I'll be playing uh, on there. If there's any problems, if I need to cancel due to health problems, whatever, you name it. Uh, life issues, uh, like if I'm on a date all of a sudden, uh, if I need to cancel, you'll know. Also, two or three hours, I'll post up what I'll be playing. What I'll be playing next time, let's see, today is Wednesday. Friday would be probably more Ninja Gaiden. I'm not sure if I want to go back to two, if I want to start doing routing again for Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge, or maybe I should just go through and keep playing Ninja Gaiden Vanilla and keep suffering through that game, which is an abomination. Uh, I don't know, but either way, it's going to be a Ninja Gaiden game from sure. I'm probably certain of. Um, unless I do a null DC stream, like an arcade stream. I would want to play some arcade games lately, too. Uh, Fightgate actually has Street Fighter, the movie, the arcade game now supported. So you can play it through GGPO, which is amazing online. So if anyone has Fightcade 2, maybe we'll do that instead. But we'll call it by ear. We'll see how things go closer. Uh, but till then, hopefully see you guys next time on Friday, usual 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.